Hey folks, welcome to B5 Bricks, hope you're all well. In today's video, I'm giving you a rundown of my top money-saving tips. If you're new to LEGO, if you've just come back to it later in life after your dark age, which is usually your late teens and twenties, or even if you've never been a fan before, but you've recently started collecting, then you might not be aware of a few things, and this can come in handy. There are some kind of obvious shopping tips, but also hopefully in this video there are some really useful ones you've never come across which can help you save as much money as possible. So if you are just like me, I'm sure you're careful about spending and you want to maximise your cash on your purchases. So watch the video until the end to get all the details. And even if you have a fair bit of disposable income to spend on the hobby, you shouldn't be a mug and allow yourself to be ripped off all the time. So let's get into the tips. Tip number one, stop buying full price Lego sets. You are mental if you are buying sets when they come out days after launch and you're paying full whack. Why are you doing this? Now I understand if you're in a country where store discounts aren't that common, it's hard to do this because what I'm saying doesn't necessarily apply, but there are other avenues open to you which I'll come on to later. But if you're in much of Europe, the US, the UK, Canada, Australia, South Africa and lots of other places, then stop buying full price sets. Lego Group controls all retail pricing and they won't allow any retailer to offer any lower price until at least six weeks after launch. So, sets that came out in the January 1st wave could only have around a 5% discount after the middle of February. But we want 20% or more, and I never buy a set unless it's around 20% off. And that is essentially the retailer taking the hit on tax like VAT here in the UK. But around the start of March and for 4-5 to five weeks, you'll see many of these January sets with 20% off. And periodically, you'll also see the previous year's summer sets with big discounts of 20% or more as well. So you're better off waiting a few months from the release dates to get the sets you want. For example, it's April right now when I'm recording this video and I just bought a whole bunch of friend sets that came out last August, but I'm getting 35% to 40% off on most and I even got some at 50%, so there is a great example. And I mean, unless it's your kid's birthday and they're desperate for a particular set, I can't see why you wouldn't wait until when you can get those kind of savings. The exceptions to this are, however, Modulars, Creator Expert series, or well, the 18 plus range, as it's morphed into now, and the UCS sets from Star Wars and Batman and that. As these are sets that rarely come down in price from any retailer, I would buy Modulars and those kind of things from the LEGO store, and this brings me on to my next tip, tip number two, which is buy UCS sets and Modulars from the LEGO store to get VIP points. Now, if you haven't done so already, sign up for the LEGO VIP points program and check your emails regularly. They send you all the dates for the double VIP point weekends, and that's double VIP point weekends. This is the time to buy those expensive sets. You can accumulate those VIP points pretty quickly and I advise saving them up and you can hit the store later in the year, say around Christmas and New Year, to spend them. The other reason for buying these kind of sets from the LEGO store is GWP, which means gift with purchase. LEGO always do these great little sets and promo sets throughout the year and that is a big incentive to do this. However, my advice with these is to not open them and in fact, you you should sell them. It's instant profit. I mean, I sold a GWP once for £50. I mean, it's a set that I got for free. That's crazy. So I regularly put them on eBay or Facebook Marketplace for like £30 or so, and it's a great little boost of cash to buy more sets that I really actually want. 
Tip number three, be very careful about the themes you want to invest in. And this is a good general tip to be mindful of. There's so many themes from LEGO and many that are very short lived as well. It's easy to get overwhelmed with wanting to buy and collect. And I think you should try to find this discipline early on when you're getting started with collecting. Think about what sort of themes you like and also the space you have. Are you collecting to display? Are you doing a city layout or primarily mocks? Whatever it is, you need to have that decision made. Also, talk to your other half about how much time, space and money you're going to commit to this as it can be a bit contentious if you don't. Once you have a limitation on the themes or collection you're going to focus on, you'll find it a lot easier and you will find your money will go further. Let's use Harry Potter as an example. The first wave of the new sets a few years ago would set you back around £1,600 at full recommended retail price in the UK. Now, that's actually ballooned to double that with the full range you have nowadays. So you can see, even one theme can be very draining. Now, if your aim is to collect the bulk of the sets in a given theme, it's expensive, even with discounts. But if you're into three or four themes, it's even more difficult. So I try to stick to my chosen themes and I pretty much ignore other themes. So for example, I don't collect Harry Potter. I have bought the train to use as a normal train and a few small sets but mostly for parts and figures. And it's the same with Marvel and Ninjago. I don't buy any Marvel sets except the Hulkbusters and my kids have a few Spider-Man ones. Compare that to Star Wars however, I have pretty much had every set from 2014 onwards at some point and I've sold many to buy more recent sets and it's the same with Batman too and because I don't get distracted on other themes I can invest more in the themes I really enjoy and that's what you should do as well. Tip 4 is Amazon. Simply check out my other video right here about Amazon and it's a pretty in-depth guide to buying cheap, relatively new sets on the website. It's a great place to get bargains but you have to use tracking apps like Camel 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 to get the best deals and also to know the release schedule to plan for discounts. So check that video out for an in-depth look. Amazon is definitely one of the best ways to save on LEGO. Tip number five is retirement. Simple as it sounds, pretty much 90% of sets have a core one and a half to two years shelf life. After that, they get delisted from the LEGO website and retired. Regular retailers, however, will often have sets that are older than this because of excess stock and many will heavily discount sets that are just about to retire as they want rid of them. I buy a lot of sets this way and it's surely the easiest tip to follow. A good example is Poe's Black X-Wing, the Star Wars set from 2015. This was around £65 at launch and it would regularly appear for around £50 in certain sale periods during 2016. I bought one for £48 on Amazon in 2016, however when this set was retiring I picked up two in 2017 and I only paid £35 for each. I suspended one from the ceiling whilst we still had our original to play with and the other one I sold in 2019 for £90. This is the perfect example to illustrate this point. Tip number six is Bricklink and Brick Owl. I could devote an entire video on this subject, but I'll keep it very brief. Not only are these sites good for buying parts cheaply, well, most of the time, but you can actually part out certain sets. What this means is instead of going onto eBay and getting ripped off buying older retired sets like the modulars, you can instead go on Bricklink, type in the set you want, and it can part out the set. And that means it'll gather all those bricks from various sellers giving you a far cheaper price than say eBay. It's almost always cheaper. And if you're not fussed about the minifigures and a box and all that, then it's a really good way of getting sets like the modulars. Tip 7 is Facebay, Gumtree and Craigslist and all those kind of websites. There are bargains to be had on sites like those and if you live in a country that doesn't have much in the way of retail discounts then this is your best option. 
It's mostly good for bulk hauls of, say, tubs of mixed Lego. I've had a fair number of big tubs from local people on Facebook over the years, and I look carefully at the photos. If there is a lot of stuff mixed in, like connects, Playmobil, or fake Lego, Lego, obviously I'm not going to bother with that kind of haul. But if you take time out every few days and have a good look at your local area, you'll be amazed at what comes up every now and then. And often there are parents who are selling their kids stuff and they just want rid of it. They'll take a lower price, you've done them a favour and you've saved yourself a fortune. However, it's not so good for things like boxed sets. I notice a lot of people go to Walmart or Tesco here in the UK, they'll buy sets like say a police truck for £10 and then they'll just put it on Facebay the same day for £15. If you're seeing this a lot on your Facebay listings, you'll probably find that your local brands of Sainsbury's or Target or whatever has these things on sale. Also, I mean, it's hardly a tip for me to mention big supermarkets. Here in the UK, we have a lot and they're very competitive. And a great resource is actually Lego Facebook groups. I mean, loads of them and they're great for when, say, Asda has a certain range on discount. I'll quickly see lots of notifications by members and posts and it's a good way of finding out about bargains as lots of people put up posts about things they see around the country. I also pop into stores regularly to see what's in the toy aisle myself and the discount bins and actually the ends of the main aisles not in the toy section often have sets on discounts too. So get onto Facebook groups if you can and you can get loads of bargains that way. Tip 8 is pick a brick and bricks and pieces. If you have a local Lego store, lucky you, lots of people don't, <laughs> it's definitely a handy place to go like I said for double VIP point weekends but the best thing is the wall of pick a brick. One problem though with Pick a Brick is that it's often a weird collection of parts and colours that are not really that desirable and essentially Pick a Brick is made up of excess parts that LEGO have overproduced. That's why it's always quite odd pieces. You'll never find things like trans blue tiles or parts that are in high demand. However, you can usually find a few things that can be useful and when I do, I just go for it. In the UK, it's £11 for the larger tub. I'm not sure what the prices are for other territories, but for example, I once got an entire tub of navy blue 1x2 plates for £11. It was well over a thousand pieces. I mean, you absolutely cannot buy that volume even in Chinese Bricklink seller online. It's by far the best way of amassing bricks on a budget. And if you start with wee bricks to fill the bottom first and you stack certain bricks, then you can get even more value. There are loads of other videos on YouTube explaining how to do this, so just search for them and get some tips. Bricks and Pieces, though, it is the official LEGO website section for buying parts. Don't go on Pick a Brick on the website, go to Support instead and click on Buy Replacement Bricks. This is in the customer service section and this has a far wider selection of parts but be prepared, it's tricky to use as you kinda need to know the part numbers to search for them. So a good way around that is if you look at the back of pretty much any LEGO instructions book, you'll have a list of all the parts and crucially the parts numbers and this is the best way of identifying the parts you need so just look through all your instructions to find the parts that you're looking for very often you'll find that the prices on here for many parts are very very good and even cheaper than on bricklink believe it or not that is absolutely true so if you have the time it's worth looking at if you are wanting to amass certain parts Tip 9 is eBay. eBay is actually pretty terrible for buying especially retired sets. It's way over inflated and oh my god, don't get me started on buying just bricks. People go to the Lego store to pick a brick, they'll buy cheap Lego, then they get home and they put it on eBay in bundles of 10 bricks or whatever and then they add postage. It's ridiculous, you are wasting your money when you buy this way. Just go to Bricklink or Lego websites bricks and pieces like I mentioned earlier and buy it yourself. You can find brand new parts on there that are even cheaper than Bricklink as well as I mentioned earlier. So I'd avoid eBay as a buyer but it's pretty good if you're selling and that's really my tip. 
Use eBay to sell sets instead. Just avoid it as a buyer. So that's it. A few handy tips if you're just getting into Lego. I really hope it helps. I'd love to hear your stories of bargains and any tips you have as well. So let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, leave me a thumbs up. It's great to get the support. And if you want more content like this, then why not subscribe? My channel is full of mocks, new set news and money saving tips and ongoing projects like my Micro Gotham City mock. Oh, and whilst you're here, why not check out some of my other videos too? And I'll catch you next time. Bye.